Our Eamon Javers in Washington has been following this story. And Eamon, the key question you asked earlier is what U.S. officials are prepared to do about this attack. Right now, they say they're taking a what they term a multi-pronged and whole-of-government response as they investigate that group called Dark Side, which, by the way, Eamon, they said they started investigating that group back in the fall. Yeah, absolutely. This is a group that came almost out of nowhere. I've been talking to cybersecurity experts about Dark Side today, and they say that they appeared, they were nowhere on the radar, and then all of a sudden very, very active. Uh, so there's some real questions about where this group actually came from. But, Scott, look, it's striking to me that we've got a number of statements here. We, you're seeing the U.S. officials now at the White House issuing statements. We heard a statement from Colonial just a short time ago. The FBI has issued a statement. Even the hackers have issued a statement today. And in none of those statements do we get an answer to the big question here, which is, did Colonial pay the ransom or not? We don't know right now. What we know is that Colonial says they're in the process now of bringing their pipeline back online in a step-by-step -step process, that they feel like that can be done substantially by the end of the week. Uh, what we don't know is if money changed hands, dollars being sent to hackers or, or more literally Bitcoin or Monero or some kind of cyber currency being sent to hackers. That's the big mystery here, and none of the people involved is giving us the answer to the question. And I think the answer to that question is going to have a lot of bearing for other companies that are hit by attacks like this. Does the U.S. government expect them to pay, or does the U.S. government have some ability to intervene in a situation like this and get a company out of this kind of hot water without paying? And that's the question that we don't have the answer to right now. If you're corporate America, you want to know, you would hope that the U.S. government can help you and save the day here without you having to send a check, figuratively speaking, to a criminal organization. That may or may not be true, and we just don't know the answer to it as we sit here right now. We'll listen for it in the Q&A portion of this briefing. We're going to monitor that, Eamon, but, but they did, in fact, make the statement um, somewhat definitively that it's Colonial that is responsible for getting the pipeline back up and running. It depends, I suppose, what right. the definition of responsible is in this case. Sure does. And look, you, the government has said in the past that they don't want private sector companies paying ransoms to these bad guys because that makes a market, right? And if you do that, you're A, encouraging the next set of bad guys and B, endowing the current set of bad guys with the financial wherewithal to do this again and better with newer and more sophisticated technology and, and more employees. So you don't want, <clears throat> if you're the U.S. government, you don't want companies paying. But imagine if you're in the boardroom at Colonial right now. You need to get back up and running. You've got the entire East Coast of the United States depending on you. Your business operations depend on this. You're going to look at this and say, do I have a choice or not? And that's going to be a business and financial decision as well as a sort of logistical and geopolitical decision. Yeah, nobody knows the issue better. Eamon, thank you. Eamon Javers in Washington for us.